What's going on, guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of Profiling Passionate People. I'm your host, Sam Ledvinka, and you already know, today's Tuesday, so we're talking about the Titans on Tuesday on Profiling Passionate People, Triple T, Triple P, and today, I actually got a guest today. It's nice. I'm going to be recapping week three with my guy, J.D. Dorfman, right there, who is part of the California Titan fan, so shout out to you guys, the CTF group, and like I was just mentioning earlier, you're my first CTF a Titans fan that I've actually met like through through the page and and over Zoom like this, but obviously I'm hoping that we'll all be able to get together here, especially at the end of the year with the Rams and stuff. But um, I, I love the Titans flag. Uh, who you got on as the Oiler jersey? Man, my boy, number one, the guy who brought me to Titan Nation, who made me love our boys, Eddie George himself. Yeah, so this, was, this was a gift. Got the Euler, uh, the Euler Eddie from his rookie year. So it kind of round out my collection. Nice. I got it. I got a same similar jersey. Yours looks absolutely more authentic and more official. Mine's, I think, the Mitchell and Ness. But uh, I'll be rocking that one uh, when we go down to uh, to Los Angeles and watch the Rams play and everything against the Titans. So a little uh, Super Bowl payback, if you will. And honestly, our team is looking so good that – that could potentially be a, a potential view of what the Super Bowl could be this year. Yep. And I mean, you saw what the what the Bucks did last year, and the fact that they got it done, and they had home field advantage. I'm sure the Rams, that's what they're kind of looking for, and all the eliteness. But we're here to talk Titans. Forget the Rams. So, without further ado, man, it felt so good to. I think we're finally starting to get over the hump against the Colts. Um, they've been our rival for so many years from Peyton Manning to, I mean, we thought we would get a break with Andrew Luck, but yeah, I, I thought we'd get a break with Andrew Luck, but this team just still looks scary. And I mean, you had an old gimpy looking Carson Wentz going out there and they almost pulled it off, but I'm glad we got the win though. Man, I don't know if, again, they almost pulled it off as much as the Titans kind of almost gave them a chance, which can yep. I, tell you, I, I think being a great fan doesn't mean you just sit up there and scream, the Titans are number one, we're the best. It's you got to look at your team. And over the years, there's been times where I, I, I kind of can put my horse blinders on and go, we're going to be fine. And I want to do it so bad for this team. I mean, the whole off season, it was a long, we got COVID, we got all this other BS that we're dealing with and just thinking about getting ready for the Titans and we got Julio and then even the draft looked promising yeah. going into the season. This was like week one and then psh, Arizona hits you across the face, yep. but man, and then you see how we're building in Seattle, especially that second half and, you know, yeah. the coordinators are starting to realize that, you know, other people got the same film they do and they got to maybe change it up a little bit and how are we going to integrate these new pieces and who's healthy and, and yeah 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 but really going looking forward to the Jets and then let's go back and talk about the Colts but I, I want to yeah. see more progress I want to see that offensive line with Taylor in it or without starting to gel a little more I want to see even man I know nobody it's disrespectful to say anything bad about Derrick Henry but even in our zone blocking schemes you see at the beginning he's hitting that one gap non-stop boom boom and then as the game goes on all of a sudden he lets those – we don't have guys that are going to push a guy 15 down, yards down the field. Nah. And then Henry starts hitting those outside gaps and going one-on-one -on -one with secondary people. And you know that's when Henry's going to turn three yards into 12 yards into, man, pay dirt. So yeah. I just want to see us keep going, keep getting better. We got some injuries. We got to figure out who's going to be on the outside linebacker now that maybe Weaver's out for a while and Bud kind of played Dupree. But I, I just want to keep seeing us get better and hitting stride, man. We just got to smash the Jets, man. Just smash them. Yeah. And I think with coming out in week one, we had kind of the same vibes as the, the Browns a couple of years ago. Oh, they got Baker Mayfield and they're going to go right through the north and this and that. And it's like, all right, they got humbleized really quick. I kind of see the season as, okay, our week one was maybe the week four preseason, kind of like how Aaron Rodgers is talking about. But the fact that – you know, we were able to go out and put away Seattle. We had to come back and claw back and do what we needed to do to get that win. And I'm sure you being a Titans fan, I'm sorry. I hate seeing us down so many points. But the fact that, like you said, you know, when Henry's able to bounce outside 
and it's one on one with the with the DBs, with these safeties, and he's making throwing them around like rag dolls. It makes a great football to watch, and I, I think the more that Taylor Lewan is starting to come along, he got his his butt lit on fire um, after the first game with Chandler Jones absolutely just manhandling him. So I think the more presence of this offensive line, like, hey, this is our bread and butter. You guys got to get it together. And, um, you know, just seeing what Tannehill is doing in the pocket, we've had at least one vicious sack where Tannehill thankfully had his helmet strapped on tight because they were headhunting. Every game. And every game. Chandler Jones, I think he had both of those fumbles that popped out the first week. And then the Seahawks defense, they had a nice little field day. Thankfully, I believe it was maybe one or two sacks that we gave up, but a whole lot better. A great, a great effort, team effort all around, all three phases of the ball. Randy Bullock finally came along. So, you know, fingers crossed until Sam Ficken comes back. But I think we're finally rolling. The cylinders are finally going for us. Um, you do look at the stats from that game. Um, you know, Tannehill, he does throw three touchdowns, which was great. Um, we did lose um, A.J. Brown, um, so that, that's to be determined. But it's the next man up. And, you know, the fact that, you know, the dude has not the biggest fan following, and I'm sure you're never going to see his jersey up in the stands right now, but Nick Westbrook Akina, I mean, the dude had four catches, 53 yards, and a touchdown. You know, comp- and he did have a very costly job, absolutely. But, you know, Derek doing his thing, 28 carries, 113. We're still putting him into um, the passing scheme of things, so it makes him an absolute – I mean, I got my Derek jersey on. If I had known that you were – Is that play that they're running now where they run play action and instead yeah. of running Tannehill on a naked bootleg where he gets his clock clean, where he kind of sticks around, turns around, and throws back to Henry on that screen pass. Yeah. Off the- action that is a filthy play it, i was up out of my seat screaming i love it i want to see more of that like keep them guessing play action should not look the same every damn time yep and and that's the thing with our previous offensive coordinator i'm drawing a blank on his name but arthur arthur, arthur smith you know we were way too predictable it's third and two and we're in the shotgun and we're gonna be dr- doing a draw play like that doesn't get it done like, if you got a 247-pound beast in the backfield, hit the hole. But I think what the Titans need to continue to do, run the ball on first down, see what we can get, potentially look at maybe play action or set up a, um, a screen or something on second down. But for us to be going, you know, three and outs every so often, we should be able to get it done. And the thing with this Titans team I know it's still early, but I'm sure as many seasons of the fan that you've been, because it seems like you've been a fan for over 20 years, just like myself, we tend to be the Titanic Titans and the typical Titans where the games that we're not supposed to win, hence Seahawks or uh, the Colts or the Cardinals, and we show up to play. But the teams that we're supposed to blow out, hence the Jets, the Jags, you know, the Texans, we struggle for whatever reason we struggle and everyone is wanting, okay, you know, money line Titans, money line this. Absolutely. I want to put money on our team as well. But at the end of the day, each team goes into the, into the game, zero, zero. And however it fights out, you, you do look at Zach Wilson, whether he's going to shape up and, you know, mature here very soon because all Corey Davis is coming to play though. And Corey Davis has a chip on his shoulder because Mike Vrabel said, bye bye, we don't want you. Yep. You know, we obviously spent the first in the our first round, fifth overall pick on him. And yeah, Corey and Corey Davis is gonna come out there for some blood. Yep. And this team is gonna be fired up. They're gonna be back at home. I believe this is the second game that they're gonna be back at MedLife. But I, I just as a Titans fan, we can't be thinking of these games as cakewalks. You know, and I get it. it. It's ground and pound, Vrabel rolling the dice. And honestly, I, I got to give a big shout out. Vrabel, yes, we were up by seven, that final, that final knockout punch. But to go for it for two, the worst we can do is still be up by seven. I'm and so was, happy to see that play call. Like right yeah. there, you have a team up against the ropes. I know people questioned the week before in Seattle whether or not he should have went for it at the end of the game. No, there, you got to kick the field goal and you got to go to overtime. But I think that was just, that was a upper level 
uh, I forgot what they're calling now the the magic numbers that people you study in football. Oh, the uh, algorithms. Yeah, whatever the algorithm said to yeah. do there, but that that's just that's a good football move, man. Yeah. And put it in, and obviously you look smarter when it happens. But why even give them a chance? Just smash them, call it a day, and let's start getting ready for New York. Yeah, and and that's the thing. I think the mental preparation. Everyone's starting to be on sync with each other. Whether we're gonna have AJ Brown or not, the next man steps up. Whether it being Josh Reynolds, hopefully coming back. Julio Jones can clearly hold it down on his own. Uh, Cameron Batson. You have all these role players that this team is the most unselfish team. I get it. You know, Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is the first person to say, hey, this is a group effort. It's a band of brothers. And I can't do anything without my offensive line doing what they're doing. And you can't do anything if we're not in the game. Derrick Henry yeah. running three times doesn't matter. I mean, you got to give it up. Our secondary is looking better every week. Oh, uh, yeah. We've had less breakdowns. Uh, I still wish we weren't doing heavy blitzes while playing 12 yards off the ball. But maybe thank that's you. That's what I'll get for Christmas. But we'll, we'll talk about that another time. But they are yes. getting better. And when we're yeah. close in games, I even said it to my boys watching the game on Sunday. I said, if we are tied or in the lead going into the second half, I know we're a second half team and that's where we're going to put it. It's just a matter of we can't be down like we were the first two weeks going into the second half because then it kind of takes Henry out of the game. If we know that let Henry get three yards, uh, we're just going to sit back on AJ when he's healthy and Julio or whoever else we throw out there. Yeah. It really is when this team's clicking, you feel it. That defense doesn't have to be on the field as long. They're fresh because Henry's on the field for 90% of the game. The DBs are getting in there making tackles. This yeah. is a great team. I just want them to play to those expectations because it's rare. We're in a window right now. And we don't know how many years we're going to get to enjoy this magic window until we're back to, you know, okay, a couple of years down the road, a couple of years down the road. And I really want to enjoy it, man. We've suffered for a while. It, it's, it's our time, baby. I want to get loud. I want to, I want to get hyped. Go Titans. Yeah, um, I'm going to comment on that in just a second. But as you mentioned, you know, our defense, you know, whether it was Jonathan Joseph or Desmond King or whoever it was playing DB last season, we're playing 10, 12 yards off the ball and it's a third and two. So I never agreed with that. But one thing that I really, really enjoyed, and I'm getting goosebumps seeing, was they showed the crowd at Nissan Stadium. For the second out of two week, out of three weeks that we've had um, football, we've been at home. And both games have been a sea of blue and baby blue. And that is big because Rabel called out our fan base last year and basically said, hey, I don't want to go to our home stadium and feel like it's an away game. I, I get it. You have the Raiders that travel well. You have the Niners that travel well. You have the Packers, the Steelers, whatever you may, may have you. Yeah, you're going to have your trickles of fans. But holy moly, Like I saw a lot of Titan fans. And the crowd just getting so pumped. So, you know, us Titan fans, like you said, we've suffered for so long. And it's like, okay, we're, we're finally tasting it. You know, it's, it's there for the taking. And right now we have a nice, comfortable lead. We're two and one in, in, the, um, in, in our uh, record. Um, we're top of the AFC South. So a lot of things are going, are going our way. Um, again, you do look at this upcoming with the Jets. Again, both teams going in at 0-0. Zero, zero. I know a lot of people have it a landslide. I'm sure we would love it to be a landslide. But before I get your prediction, I must say my favorite Titan and Jets memory. I'm, a, I'm still a big Mariota fan. I'm still crying that we let him go. But for obvious reasons, we had to. But I remember when I think it was 2017 and we were in New York and they were wearing their throwback uh, New York um, Titan helmets and, and jerseys and stuff. And um, Marcus had motion out of the backfield and lined up as a receiver. Nobody paid him any attention. And this dude burns everybody for like a 60 yard um, receiving catch. So um, obviously Tannehill's played receiver back in his day. So a nice little, Nice little trickery would be nice, but I, I'm just looking for some more Titan football, and it's only Tuesday. Oh, man, it's going to be a long week looking forward to it. I think, though, that Vrabel and the boys get hyped for this one. I think the team comes together, and I'm, man, my money is we're going to see the most complete Titan game of the year. So I'm, uh, I'm looking for them to come out. I think there's some guys who realize this is the chance to earn a spot. Well, there's a couple guys down for injury, and I think we see the Titans put up big numbers. 
Jets come out, they get confused, we get some sacks early, all of a sudden they're in, you know, trying to throw the ball, and the Titans win by 15 or more. So Yeah, that, that's how I'm seeing it as well. I, I see probably 31-10. Um, hopefully we can run the score up, and, you know, we'll see. But, again, it starts off 0-0. We got – Titan football in five days, and I'm sure we'll be seeing you here in the near and dear future. So, JD, really appreciate you again. Shout out to CTF California Titan fans for making that happen for us. Just talking some Titans football on a Tuesday. Until then, tighten up. Until then, that's JD. I'm Solomon. You guys take care. Peace.